Uh, doing a little peeking behind the scenes, as they say, I thought it would be uh, interesting for people to see where this whole idea of mine, Inglewood Instruments, came from. So I had a post about this the other day, but here is not an Inglewood Instruments instrument. Uh, this is from when I was about um, 13 or so. My buddy Mark was willing to give me a hand with the fact that I couldn't afford a Les Paul. He loaned me his. Uh, it was very, I think he referred to, it, referred to it as puke green, but I did not. It was just a lot of fun to play. Um, along the way, I got the idea to build my own. You can see the lovely choice of hickory there. Walnut, hickory, maple. This thing weighs a ton. Uh, I do have a Les Paul now, and I think it weighs almost as much as the whole guitar. I had exciting designs in mind to just like uh, stair step down the sides and make some sort of bizarre BC Rich thing. Uh, Floyd Rose at least started to be drilling. We made this thing with like a hand drill. Uh, let me show you something else. So then fast forward in a number of years from you know, when I was young, I uh, first came across the instruments like an Inglewood Instruments uh, River Guitar when I was on my honeymoon and discovered one. So along the way, being a woodworker at times, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna take a stab at making one of those things. Uh, see if I can't mimic what I was finding. <clears throat> This is a little embarrassing. So here's what I made. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you think it looks nice. I was taking a, I, in the moment I decided to make these little triangular cuts, but the really exciting parts are that I didn't really measure all the things that I should have measured back here. This is just a raw block of wood that I found at the moment. Um, and then I hand measured and hand cut. Actually, you know what? You can see over here, I marked all of it with a ruler. I think I was using like a Stumac uh, measuring thing. Um, so I hand marked and hand cut the, the slots, put them in, but there's definitely someone here that do not quite uh, happen to be parallel to the other ones. And then I didn't really pre-think exactly how all this stuff would go across up here. So, you know, now I have these really cool pins that stick in there. Um, but walnut maple. So it, I guess it actually does sound Decent? Yeah, it's, just, it's more in tune than I sometimes give it credit for. Um, the lower frets get close to being in tune. I don't know what strings these are. I think they might actually be electric guitar strings because I didn't know what I needed and I walked in the store and they were like, I don't know, how about these? Because they didn't know what I needed either. Onward and upward from here, this is probably seven-ish years ago, I want to say. My son was a baby or something like that. So fast forward a few more years from that version, um, the one right here on my shoulder, looks a bit like a stick, uh, is a pick and stick is what they're called. That's a common design that was first, as far as I can tell, introduced in um, in Kentucky in like the late 60s or somewhere in that area. Um, there probably were versions of it before, but Homer Ledford was one of the first people to make it. It's gone by different names, um, Dulcetar, et cetera. This particular design here is uh, one you also find with the strum sticks. I took a swing at that with my buddy Joe, <clears throat> learned yet again that being a luthier is really hard, which is why I now have people who are better at that that I work with. So <clears throat> then fast forward till about three-ish years ago, I was, you know, I think we were snowed in or something and I started drawing out on the paper to figure out the design I liked. Going back to actually the reason I showed you, going back to my childhood idea of a Les Paul, part of why I did that originally is because I couldn't afford it, but I also just really like Slash, so the Les Pauls were my thing. And then I saw some parlor style guitars for the first time back when I was working with Groons briefly in 20-ish, 20-ish maybe. So that's where I came up with this design, the what is now the uh, Model 1 River Guitar. So this is the dulcimer version, just kind of keeping with that last one I had. You can see the, the fancy <clears throat> paper underneath the bridge to try and get the height a little higher. This one's unfinished. It's maple and cherry, same purple heart fretboard that are on a lot of them now. Um, but it's unfinished and I think I actually may have taken a stab at this one, which is why some of the frets are still sharp. There's a lot of improvements we've made on it. So one of the things that you'll see right here is the bridge is a fret, fret there. It's called a zero fret. There's a lot of instruments like this that have that kind of thing. I think some mountain dulcimers themselves do. But a better way to do it is with a uh, bone or just some kind of a carved nut. So that's what this one sounds like. So, so I feel like I finally, finally got it to where it sounds like a regular instrument.
particular design, even though it was getting closer to what I wanted, was not designed to be able to play in tune. A lot of like physics and luthier specific reasons for that. But um, let me show you the most recent, the prototype version, which is still getting better as we bring it to production. But let me show you that one. Okay, new day. Here's the here's the next stage and not the final stage in progression. So here's the exact same style as the one you just saw in the previous um, clip, but we've made the fretboard up, which they call proud. We've got a carved uh, nut and bridge at this point. And um, some of the some of those things really help solve the intonation problems that I found on, on pretty much all the other instruments out there and were existing on my former version. So this is actually still a prototype. Here's, here's how it's rounded out in the evolution. So here's how we got here. I think one thing that really impressed me about this version was that it, it started having more um, dynamic response. So I can just do like, you know. And that, that should be hard for you to hear because I'm intentionally playing pretty light, but it sounds very sweet to me. So if we were going to play like with a pick though, it kind of goes to the other end of the spectrum. intend to be a full-on demo video just sort of a progression of things like i said the full-on production version that's going to be the launch being made right now as of the time you watch this we're probably only a few weeks away from that being ready at which point we will do some uh video i will do some video hopefully work with some of the uh, partners you've seen in the past uh, as well as some new ones and then we'll be pretty close to launch at that point so you'll be able to jump in and um and uh purchase so anyway that's a little bit how we got from there to here and uh, I'm Ryan with Inglewood. Thanks. <laughs>